Welcome back to the qualifiers for one of the regions going to the World Esports Cup, Falix. We've had a start on Asia. We've gone to Europe afterwards. Now we're looking at the Americas. And we've had a good day yesterday of six games. I think we have some clear storylines on the scoreboard, some teams that were really separating themselves from the rest. Uh, but we are looking at the last six games to close things out today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. I think yesterday has shown us that our predictions has uh, uh, kind, uh, kind of come true. I, I, I'm saying predictions, but it's only just been the one prediction, and that is that Chile and Brazil are going to run away with it. And uh, so far, honestly, it looks, it looks quite promising. I think Chile especially has had an amazing day yesterday. But, but it, it'd be too easy. It'd be too easy if that was the case at the end of these six matches as well. I feel like so. Um, I'm, I'm going to be excited to see how the rest of the teams, the run-ups especially, are going to perform today. And your favorites, Argentina, are very close by as well, aren't they? They are really, really close. And they're the one team that can kind of throw us in for a bit of a loop today. They're the one team that has yeah. the best chances to break into that top three. And uh, they will have six games to try and do that today. Starting off as off and Sonok, three air angles, two Miramas to close things out late into the night. As you can see by the times there, those times are in, in, uh, in European time zone. I know it's not as late for you guys, but it is pretty late for us. And uh, yeah, we had, I think, a pretty, pretty close battle uh, for first for a few matches yesterday. And then suddenly that broke off where Chile has kind of run away with things. And then Brazil is now fighting for second place with Argentina. So the battle is no longer between first and second. The battle right now between second and third. Yeah, it's as you said, the the, the times obviously European times right now, CET, which is uh, why well, plenty of the PUBG Mobile community around myself have said that they're going to watch the VOD. It's uh, just too late in the evening. But obviously for you guys out there uh, in the America region, this is uh, quite the healthy point in time during your day right on the evening uh, let's head over to the point structure nothing too surprising i think everyone knows this at this point but we're just making two sure because obviously this this tournament is a little bit different that uh, all of you guys know how things uh, are you know being played out here especially since we only have 11 teams so normally you'd see 9th to 16th place getting zero placement points this around is 9th to 11th place which well, shouldn't be that much of a surprise because once again, we only have 11 teams, or should I say countries, in this lobby. And then obviously for each elimination, you do get that one kill point as well. So that hasn't changed, which also means, this has been the main talking point yesterday, that there's going to be less kill points, obviously, being able to, to be gathered. And mm -hmm. that in turn means uh, placement points are going to be, uh, in comparison to kill points, uh, a little bit more important because... Yeah. Just, just, just based off of what we've seen, you know, less, less big rounds being able to be secured. But then again, we had Chile still coming out strong. Yeah, and uh, you say less big rounds, but yeah, Chile was able to put up quite a lot of those. They've been able to get away multiple wins yesterday. They were kind of really running away with the show after having a really yeah. quiet match one, uh, especially the Arangel game. We just saw one little highlight where I think they had their 19 kill chicken dinner, right? And able to close out two more afterwards was, uh, was crazy for them. And uh, so far, they are deservedly at the top of the standings, with Brazil um, looking way better at the start um, and quickly falling off, I feel like. Quickly falling off to be a consistent, good second place. And then towards the end of the day, Argentina really picked up the slack and came and brought themselves into the conversation. Yeah, Argentina, um, the closest run-up right now to these top spots. But um, I'm saying top spots, it's really only Brazil that can be caught up to realistically. Uh, Gila, with what they've shown us yesterday, it's probably not going to be caught. I mean, um, I hate to break it to you guys, but uh, 96, I think 69 or 96 points, something. I think 96, actually. I think they were in the 90 yeah. points area, which is, I think you said it yesterday, 16 points average is um, unfathomable in a lobby yeah. like this. Unfathomable considering you only have 40 other players you can essentially take down, and these guys had a almost not 20 uh, killed in a lobby like this, which I think... Scaled up to a 64 le uh, uh, lobby would probably be something around the 25, 26, 27 point mark, I'm guessing. I mean, it should be, uh, in the past, maybe I'll get down to it and actually break down the numbers. But it should be something around that area, which gives you a, a kind of a good perspective on how crazy that actually is. It's, it's Yes, it's 19 kills, but it's 19 kills in this lobby. That's from the, the point I'm trying to yeah. make. So, uh, yeah, Chile, I don't think they're going to be caught up to today. It, it needs one, maybe two dinners 
even for Brazil to be able to catch them. Yeah. And then we only have six rounds, so um, no one else is really going to be able to do that uh, otherwise. So, yeah, Brazil is going to be the it's team that we have to talk about and, and especially watch today. It's crazy. And we see a fight of, of Brazil versus Argentina there yesterday. A really yeah. impactful one where Argentina was kind of the bridesmaid yesterday, just in second <laughs> place all the time and not able to close one out for themselves, but consistently getting those second places. Um, was able to keep them in the contention and now suddenly we're at a, at a point in time where the gap is so so big uh, that we're actually pretty much talking about about second place unless something crazy happens so i think you're absolutely right there is a theoretical chance um 36 points can be caught up in a day but it would have to be for chile not to qualify it would have to be two teams getting that right and so both of the second and third place team would have to have a really really good day and chile would somehow have to fall off completely and I just don't think that's happening. I don't, don't think no. the way they're playing and the way they are just going for fights and they isolate good fights. And they're not taking every fight. They're taking really good fights and winning them very clearly. So I don't see why that would just fall apart and out of nowhere. Let's take a look at the leaderboard right now. Argentina in second place. Yeah, we're talking about 96 points. Chile obviously being the first 96 points. We've talked about this, but second place, that's... You know what it really comes down to argentina with that very last game despite not winning a round that's that's the crazy thing about it they haven't won a round yet and they're still on 61 points and yeah. brazil obviously being the runner up that has won two rounds only on 60. we've seen this at the very beginning of the first day first round we were all really confused on how brazil played we thought they were gonna go just aggressive push out that's the infernal uh, rage we know uh, these guys like to play aggressive it's an aggressive region just in general but they've really slowed things down they wanted to go for the chicken dinner and then we actually thought about you know the point structure and you know 11 team lobbying it kind of made sense to us but if you don't actually take your chances like brazil hasn't in the latest stages of yesterday then you're going to be overtaken by, by a team that's a little bit more consistent at least getting some placement points on the board instead of just winning anything and that's been argentina good news is though it's only a point and the cutoff to fourth place, even though that doesn't really mean anything to Brazil because it's not in qualification spot, is 18 points. So, I mean, it's going to be a big step up for Dominican Republic yeah. if that happens. Um, and and they, they should be able to take Brazil. It might be the more interesting story at some point here. If Chile, the team we see on our screens right now, Potro, Milovan, Messi, I think, Messi, maybe. Uh, but he's, he's Chilean, so I'm not sure if it will be Messi uh, and Elite. Probably not. If they, if they play <laughs> normally, if they play something... Uh, that you would expect from a team of this roster, maybe not as good as yesterday, but maybe just a, your normal uh, five to eight points per game, then we're not going to be talking about first place at all. And then maybe it's going to be a Dominican Republic, a Colombia, and, or somebody else further down the line that pushes them themselves up to second and third and actually makes that conversation more interesting. Maybe it's not just going to be Brazil and Argentina battling it out for second, and maybe somebody else has a say in this. And oh. Maybe that becomes the story of the day. It's simple. It has to be simple, right? Now that I'm looking at it, his nickname. Oh that's got to be simple because the S1 in the end. But oh God. yeah, that really? yeah, wow. that's making a lot of sense now. But I feel if you're a pro, stupid now. no, 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 no. If you're a pro <laughs> player, <laughs> if you're a pro player out there and you want to get yourself known, then use your correct nickname. I mean, come on. Uh, I mean, to some degree, that's it's not it's not even for us. It's for you out there. Imagine you hit the, the the nuttiest clip of all time in this qualification, and you just and then the caster is going, "Oh my God, yeah. said one will do it." And the, your actual name is simple. I mean, ah. that could have happened yesterday. So simple. Please change your name. Uh, either way, good to have him back. He's been having a massive performance as well, and especially considering he's had a massive performance. It's kind of sad. Guatemala oh on the screen uh, as well with some some good names. J Rock obviously. Uh, Fishy is in there. Mr. Terror not not playing today. He hasn't played yesterday, so I'm guessing he's not going to play today. Alex and Tony as well. Tony especially got to give him a shout out before we switch over to Argentina. He's been um, the last player for Guatemala quite often. He's been having quite yeah. good survivability. Yeah, they're trying to put up numbers and the rest of the team has already fallen. This is a big team though that we have to talk about. This is Argentina. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said yesterday, I didn't believe they would be a contender, but I would love if they were. And they came and proved me wrong. They went, uh, they went absolutely out there, got themselves a ton, a ton of placement points without a single win. I think 
first two matches, you could say good salvages, not really something you can expect, but afterwards they played really solid PUBG and pretty much just lost fights to the big dogs a lot of the time, right? Like important fights that they lose to Chile or um, to Brazil and uh, that pushed themselves from first to second but still in a great spot to close out the qualification here today and um, if they end up above Brazil today and if they end up going to the World Esports Championship that's already a massive upset just by itself yeah uh, interesting uh, by the way Hattie from the Argentina lineup um, he got fourth in the PMSL America qualifiers I believe yeah it must have been America spring qualifier uh, and barely missed PMSL Americas spring season obviously by a single point uh, or rather a single ranking i don't think it's been a point i think it's been a couple of points but a single ranking otherwise he would be in there with the rest of his team or at least um, some of his teammates so unfortunate scenario for him as we had another to panama these guys have shown us willpower i guess you could say they, they've definitely shown us willpower and they've really tried to salvage as much as, as much as they could in plenty of these rounds made sure that if they had early fights to at least have some players get out of it and you know to, to really try their best but if you have competition like chile if you have competition like brazil it's just not getting any easier you know to find anything yeah in the rest of the round and unfortunately they haven't really been able to find any big rounds either panama currently sitting at the very last place unfortunately 11 points only have been secured in the first six rounds yeah not the start of the tournament they would have wanted but not a tournament they were favorites in at any point maybe a similar story for ecuador who we didn't expect to go out and do great things um but they were a menace in some of the games it's just consistency is a big issue for a lot of these teams towards the bottom they have their little pop-ups yeah. but then they also have a lot of games where they just can't get anything going and oh. i remember there was a whole lot of hot drops in there and especially coming to these rosters and that really, really cost them quite a lot and cost them a lot of time, a lot of players, a lot of position in early circles. So it's no surprise yeah. in some sense that they are sharing the bottom of the scoreboard. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see if they have the fifth player coming in today because Bree, I don't think Bree has played yesterday. I'm not sure. But I thought 80s played yesterday. I'm pretty sure 80s played yesterday. Yeah. So this might Correct. hinder the lineup change. Is it too late for that? Unfortunately, it's the best of 12. So probably, um, mathematically speaking, they're going to have to win every single round if they want to make it into qualification. Argentina has to have some uh, pretty bad ones. Well, every single round would probably be an overstatement, but probably like three out of six if they really want to make it and have good rounds in the rest of them. So the first round is probably going to tell us enough on whether or not they will have chances. But Hanover versus Suriname, they're surprising me. I think overperforming just a tiny bit. Yeah. They've shown us that these guys can fight at a couple of rounds with around four kills. I think three rounds with a minimum of four kills which is a pretty good performance for a rather unknown region, a rather unknown country, even my mind that. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, outside of, um, obviously, the Americas region, it, it might be a fairly unknown country. But Suriname is uh, putting themselves on the map with these representatives. 28 points, and with a tiny miracle, potentially still in the running. Yeah, solid performance brings them into sixth place. Solid performance by their fans in chat. I think it was one of the flags we saw the most yesterday was Suriname. Um, even though Chile was completely dominating in game. Colombia, though, uh, is the team we have on our screens right now. And they're a team that's been at the World Esports Championship before. And they're a team that could do it today. Big day for them, good day for them. And a bit of a fault for Argentina or Brazil. And suddenly they're right up there, right? If they start the game, um, if they start the day strong on Sanok, um, then they could easily get themselves up there and could be an absolute contender. So they are one of the teams we're looking out for today. And we're hoping that they make it exciting and that they make it close at the top. Dominican Republic. I think um, we were on the topic of, you know, hoping that some teams are going to make it to the top. Dominican Republic, probably the most surprising team at uh, the top ranks, even though it's not that surprising either. You know, I've talked about an active. He's not been the carry I hoped he was going to be. He's been there. Mm -hmm. He's been active. He's had impact. But I wouldn't have figured out that he was kind of their star player. I wouldn't have known beforehand. So, um, inactive. Maybe for steps up today, they've got a chance. Uh, we're talking about the top four, especially in terms of teams that are in the running. Maybe at Columbia to the mix, realistically, like actual good chances. Maybe at Columbia, if the first round, you know, goes well and Brazil and Argentina, uh, maybe have a little bit of a slump and maybe the Dominican public as well. But yeah, that's one of the teams that is still in the running. Talking about being in the running, there they are, the big dogs in the lobby that 
have not quite reached that full potential yet. And I expect this, and this is my prediction now, Corbo, this is going to change today. Brazil is going to mm -hmm. turn up. Uh, they're going to start their engines. Then again, again, though, into fifth, maybe even sixth gear. And they're going to win a couple of more rounds. And I think they're going to play more aggressive as well. I think they have so, how many they can actually. So you're stealing my day one prediction, basically. Where I said Did they I? might not be in the top two after after day one, but I expect them to be top two after day two. Did you actually say that? Yeah, I said that at the start of the broadcast. That is... I said, maybe, I said they're maybe too much of a favorite, you know? It might be a little, really? might be a little too low pressure for them to actually get all excited and all super focused. And maybe that turned out yesterday. We'll see if it. We'll see if the second part turns out today. Um, but we'll we'll have to to quote famous words yesterday. We'll have to wait and see. The USA is the last <laughs> roster, though. Um, a team that we weren't sure how well they were going to do. We thought there was potential there, but there was potential for things to go wrong as well. And I think we've seen a little bit of both. A pretty frag heavy team. Uh, when you look at how they get their kills, they are um, ninth, but they are. I, I believe fifth or sixth in kill points, so not really been getting the placement points they would have wanted in this lobby, but yeah, also consistently getting a few kills on the board. Talking about kill points, they're one of the only teams, I think together with Chile and Argentina, that has never had a round without kills. <laughs> These guys are just... I, I think that's through the fact that obviously the early game has unfortunately been just really chaotic for them time and time again. They just haven't figured out a way to consistently dodge these fights, and they haven't really been going out of their way either to dodge these right they kind of want to have them i think they realized in the last two rounds as well that they kind of need to take them order to have a chance um at this point you know just just uh, points wise speaking but yeah these guys uh, as we said one of the few teams that has uh, always gotten a kill point in a round yeah i mean and we've seen that and we've seen that in the past in other qualifiers uh, it can work to some extent and it might work to get you into a top eight but it's probably not going to get you into the top two if you're not really getting any of the placement points going right so um, yeah. it's 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 held them somewhere around a contention point but they're not in a position now where you would expect them to do anything if if it was a top four you know maybe i'd say sure but uh they just haven't found the consistency you need to be able to push yourself into a top two of any lobby and that's the nature of this tournament that's the nature, nature of this qualifier we're gonna have to send nine teams home and uh Right now, the USA is looking like they're one of them, but they still have six chances to show everybody what they can do, and they have six chances to show everybody that they deserve to be playing for the USA, regardless of the outcome in the end. And I think a lot of teams have come here today to do that. And there's something special about representing your nation. There's something about playing for your country. Um, and I think everybody will want to show that they have what it takes to represent their country, and they will do their very best today. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. As we are heading into the very first game of the day, it is Senok. And uh, we touched on this yesterday. Uh, it is, I want to say, one of the fairer maps now that we only have 11 teams. Otherwise, it really wouldn't be. But <laughs> this time around, it, it, it kind of feels nice. I'm just going to say it like it is. It feels nice. It feels like a frag-heavy map. It feels like... This is how Senok was supposed to be played in competitive. Uh, you have the option for car rotations now. Depending on your loot spot, obviously, if you have enough cars, that, that might be the one thing that you know we might have to tune if you were to play 11 team comp from now on out. But um, the rest of it, yeah, I, I like this map. I, also, the, the whole crossing bridges and stuff, it gets so much more fair with less angles on you. This is a horrible circle for almost everyone. As we get back to the game, I think yeah. Ecuador's got a good chance now of taking spots early. We, we've, we've seen Sandhawk, uh, but it was still played in the very big tournaments as well. Be that unfair because this type of circle always ended close to the hill. Yeah. And the first team that just took the hill was, was always going to win it. And Ecuador's yeah. got the chance now. Ecuador has a good chance to get themselves a super high priority spot here. Argentina as well. They can cross very early, but they can also decide to hold down the bridge, whichever they think is more... Um, more beneficial to the game plan. Brazil coming out early out of the boot camp area could also be a thing. But if you were keeping an eye out and if you were attentive there, you saw that Colombia was had, had some weird stuff going on. They have three players in Pinan and one of them, um, I think that was Achilles, uh, was way off towards the east, was way off um, from the rest of the squad in the middle of a different team. So he's messed up his parachute a little bit, maybe um, a bit of a game restart there, a game crash or or maybe just a little bit AFK when the game started, um, is going to have to uh, 
Well, it's going to have to try and come back to his squad somehow and might cost them a whole lot of time because they could be going for one of these early rotations that we're seeing Brazil do right now, for example. And yeah, there's Legal going down. That's the first bit of messy problems for that Colombian squad that we were hoping could make a move today. Yeah, first player goes down. It's Panama picking that one up. That is a very important pickup as well for the early game that they're in. Uh, we said when it comes to coming back, this first round is going to tell us who's going to potentially have the chance because for all these teams down from sixth place, if the first round doesn't work out, just from a mathematical point of view, it's uh, it's going to get impossible. And right? if you're in temp, obviously 10 points territory, and we expect the first couple of teams to consistently score at least some kind of points, then you will have to win that first game to even get close to it, to, to, to be able to overtake them, even with a really high, maybe a triple um, you know, triple uh, point average and factor in comparison to some of these top teams. So we'll have to wait and see. Right now, 61 points and 98 points are the points for the top two. And these guys, as of right now, we'll be going to Rio, Chile, Argentina, Brazil, and obviously the Dominican Republic, as well as Colombia. We are still very much in the running, and these guys... As we said, will be the favorites to take that trip. No other fight so far though in phase one. As we expected to as well. Yeah. With uh, so few teams, there is more space. A little bit more space and uh, well gathered by Brazil Day. We see already on the other side of the river in the bottom sides of the mountain, even getting themselves a car to be able to move later on. So they, they went for a little bit of everything here. They went for a prior position on the top side. They went for a little bit of loot towards the bottom and they went for a vehicle. So really they're setting themselves up for success here. As uh, we see Colombia, they lose, uh, not Achilles, the one who messed up his parachute, they lose Legal very early on the rescue mission, but now they're in, now they went into the circle, and now they have to be extremely careful because they're cruising right into Uruguay. Yeah, first play I think has been spotted already, but it is Navy taking him down. And, uh, well, Navy oh. against Navy to some degree, it might have been teammates actually, Cardiac uh, against the Colombian player, and it's a 1-1 trade as far as I can tell. Not really favoring anyone, but... Well, the next two frags do go the way of Uruguay, and even though we haven't seen them, three frags being secured. But they have lost the play in the process as well, so this isn't really too much of a win. But, Colombia especially, we said they needed a big first game in order to catch up. This has not been it. Very, very dire situation for them now. Yeah, this is... Uh... It's rough not only for the scoreboard, it's also rough for the mental, right? You were hoping to get the catch-up train going, you were hoping for the big comeback today. And you, you, you keep kept telling yourself everything was possible if you just started started off on fire and then you start off like this and it just just gives you a big massive dent in uh, in your game plan for today and in your confidence for today. So they would have to go crazy now um, in the next few games to have a chance and they would have to hope now sit, watch and pray um, that the teams ahead of them don't have a good game. 42 points right now. Dominican Republic with puppy shower especially, as shown as yesterday, these guys can't fight. But they're willing to take risks. It's what you need. And quite honestly, um, as I've said before, the biggest upset in the top four, maybe even top five. Together with Argentina to some degree. And... Just a tiny bit more is needed. Maybe this will be the round. Judging by that position right now, it could well, very well mean an easy entry into the next couple of phases as well. No one's really straight ahead of them. And to find a good position, we saw yesterday how important that is. Who knows, maybe they can pick up double-digit points at that point. It becomes very, very likely that with a good point average, they will be able to catch up to Brazil at the very least. Maybe even Argentina, depending on how this game goes. Always a chance, and uh, as long as you keep things in your own hands as possible, it's just you don't want to be giving it out of your own hands. You don't want to be giving uh, everything to the hope of other teams underperforming. Panama now on a big send with the cars right ahead of Guatemala. Shots might come out here. These players are fairly low by the blue zone, so a few tags will be all that's needed. That car is blowing up as well. That's 
a vehicle is no longer being used. So a bit of a messy situation on that southwestern edge as the circle has gone into absolutely nothing. Shifts down from the hill, Felix, into the wow. water. And the western coast is where you want to be right now. Not what a lot of these teams expected, but a circle that Argentina is perfectly set up for. Yeah, if I'd be playing this, I'd just close my phone at this point. That is uh, a horrible circle. <laughs> if I'm anywhere else <laughs> of the circle right now, legitimately, I wouldn't want to play anymore. Danny tries to at least get some kind of point on the board, but he's been taken down almost immediately as well. Uh, Battles is there, though, to bring things back. And Norji has been taken down as a result. And now the Blue Zone obviously does its work too. And more knocks are raining on in. Schiller is obviously trying to hold this from the distance as well. But for now, it seems like only Panama has really got angles on this. And I'm not too surprised. Panama obviously has to go for these uh, wins. And, and, and especially big rounds too. So it just is now finding that one frag. And them seeing that Tony has died yeah. to the Blue Zone. They want to push this, but I think they I think they must have realized by now that the last player, unfortunately, has gone out to the blue zone. That means no more frags being picked up. But it is a good start for them, though. Yeah. That being said, four points, nowhere close to being enough. They need, like, four more of these isolated finds to, to even get close to the realm that like Colombia has. Look at this, though. Argentina has just lost two. Two Brazil and a third party from afar. I said Argentina was in one of the big, biggest spots in the circle. They've been breached. And they've not only not defended the breach, they've also lost two members and two Brazil. They're now trying to get out of there. They're now trying to defuse the situation and maybe find another spot to call home. So this is a big, big thing for everybody on the leaderboard. I say this, Mystic is very slowly cruising in with his car here. Papi Sawa more than ready, but he doesn't want to take the free kill. I'm not sure what he's waiting for, Falex, but he's going to try and take it now. And oh boy, Mystic on the wrong side of the car to survive that one. It's a disaster for Argentina to start the day. Yeah. That is not how you want to start it. Not if you're in contention for qualifying. You have to avoid these zero-point rounds at all costs. Even one, even two, even three points would be enough to, to get close to the point average that they want to have. Uh, you know, they can, they can way easier bring it back and... and you know, in a good round of the next couple of rounds. But if you have a zero point round, this this is yeah, this is this is this disastrous the situation like this becomes very unlikely that Brazil and also Chile are gonna slow down if you have a game like that. And they're gonna realize this as well. If 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 I'd be Brazil seeing this in the kill fleet that Argentina's lost players, I'll be playing even more safe because I don't need to take a risk at this point. If I if I play game for game, I play out this game to the best of my ability and play as safe as I can because every single point from here on out is going to be a point that, you know, I get on top of that yeah. difference to Argentina. And that's that's a good situation to be in. But, well, I'll take it all back. Brazil's not doing that at all. They have a 2-1-1 split. But this, despite Argentina being taken out and despite this circle as well, they're controlling the entire center of it. And with that shift, surely they're going to group. But yeah. either way, they're in a great spot. They're in a great spot right now. The only thing I was a little bit confused by is that they didn't want to get more aggressive towards Argentina when they were getting the two knocks, right? When they were getting the knocks and um, realizing, okay, we've just killed two of Argentina. Um, I thought they would go a little bit, a little bit more aggressive using their man advantage to close that out instantly. Because like you said, every single point you get is a point you get out of Argentina, but that's only when you're getting those placements while Argentina is already out of the lobby. So... Um, giving Hati or Haiti uh, a chance to rat and a chance to sneak up on someone, maybe get one or two kills, salvage the game for Argentina once again, um, is understandable when, when they were getting third party in this fight, but it's something they would have loved to avoid if they had the choice. Brazil still playing that really dangerous split. And just to show you, these guys are not fit. I, I thought they're gonna, you know, take it a notch back, especially after what we've seen yesterday. I mean, they haven't really shown us that they want to go for these aggressive splits. And in a round like this, where Argentina's almost been taken down entirely, just one player left alive, I thought they're just gonna sit into the center, which they have the ability to do, and just, not saying rat it out there, but at least play it off of the zone that they've been given, because they've been given a great zone. 
But um, I think we might have seen a change just based off of the first three phases now that we can we can analyze already. They would have done this yesterday. I'm pretty sure of this. They would have done this yesterday. I think they want to play more aggressive today. They want to clean up these edges more consistently. And I think they realized that with all these other contenders doing that exact thing, you know, grabbing all the kill points on the edges from teams that just, you know, better than, honestly. There's, I don't think there's a way around this. They're just, just better than in terms of mechanical skill power. And yeah, I think they've seen this. I think they want to mimic that. Um, and... I'll we'll have to wait and see if that works. I think in this round, it could very well work, especially more of these types of fights happening on the edge now. This is a isolated fight coming out from the United States. We talked about these guys too. They're not afraid to take these kinds of fights, but they have to be careful. They're being walked into a trap right there, and the first rag is being taken by Piddles. Awkward fighting around the shotguns. Small, small angles. Lots of duking going around, but it's going the way of Suriname right now. One up, though. Trent knocked as well. And it's lots of casualties on both sides. No one's getting out clean in the USA. Can they get the res at least? Are they going to get third party by maybe the Brazil solo from a distance? Diego, you can see he's looking. You can see he wants it. But he's not going to engage it just yet. So they should get that res. And they should come out on top here, USA. A classic USA early fight that they do take away. And now the circle, with the circle now shifting off, and we can maybe get a little bit more of the classic USA, which is struggling to get into this one. But looking at the map, this should be one that's fairly, fairly doable for the US American squad. Good stuff. And I'm still excited to see Brazil playing out this round. I think they're playing the most dangerous, but also most elaborate PUBG MOBA in this lobby for this game. Look at the split they have. Super risky. But also super high payoff if it works. You're denying so many positions from all these teams. And, and look what happens, uh, right? You deny three centralized positions. Everyone else is going to have to fight because there's just not enough spots. Even in an 11-team lobby. And that's always seeing these fights at the edge happening. And Chile now. Big trouble too. This this is this is so interesting. I think Brazil could get really close. They play out the round. But I think I think the way they will be, which is high, high points, high kill points that just now picked up two against the United States, yeah. then even Chile might have to worry that with another good round, it could happen. But I think I'm think i thinking way too far ahead now. For now, it looks like Chile has big troubles to get any points on the board. The one placement has been secured, though, as the rest of the players on that northern side will rotate off. It's just a duel left. And I think the silence from Brazil or Uruguay in the center might be pretty well to stop them to rotate even further. Tough game for them. Classic Sanok chasing Blue Zone. There's Hattie, though, getting himself a kill in the kill feed. Knock and flush. And like we said, every single point matters, right? This is a big one. Oh, he got... Did he get three knocks? Oh, he could get another one here if he just stays on for just a little while longer. If he maybe gets a little help from range, he's trying to dodge around the rock. This could be massive if he finds it, but it... Oh, this is no HP on 80s. Imagine if he finds that. Imagine if he stays in the fight. That could have been the massive salvage that Argentina needed. Now I think he's only done the damage. I don't think he's actually flushed any of these kills out. No, more nades are raining in. We started to see how Little Boy can third party this. There might be a frag or two in this for him. Panama's still trying to find some kind of angle. But, yeah, you can see Jesus is already trying to play this one a little bit slow, but there goes the knock. That's legend finding one. And the Leon kids having the answer on Chile as well. Now the Dominican Republic is closing down. The frag has happened. Perfect bait for the vehicle as Jesus gets knocked down as well. Flushed immediately after. And Active now wants to close it out. Last player just behind the SUV. And oh, clean. good stuff. And Active not only pre fires it, his team is there to secure the frag. So both sides of the vehicle of the uh, van are covered. And just like that. We can Republic grab more placement and also more kill points. Five already. This might be an upset. Yeah. I think they're going to get very close to Brazil or rather Argentina now with the way Brazil is positioned inside the safe zone. Yeah, they're, they're closing the gap. They're making the moves necessary to push themselves up there. And they're playing versus two teams in front of them. Now, Papi Sauer. There's a big, big off angle, but can't get anything going. That's a big step. That's a big problem when they have a four-man Ecuador knocking on their doorstep. 
would have loved to get at least the opening, even if he gets traded here, even if he gets traded, Anok buys a whole lot of time with the circle already moving and Ecuador not being in it. Would have loved to have that happen, but wasn't meant to be. Now they have to figure out where they want to go with this and where they're heading. They know about this Brazil player in the little tower. Do they know that it's a solo? Yes. Do they know he has teammates all across the map? No, they don't. But they will hear this fight, Felix. They will hear this breach any second now. Yeah. And at that point, I think they might have to react a little bit quicker than, than what they're doing right now. Law, yes, he knows they're outside, but it's three players. The, the good thing about this is he's not being pressured just yet. That nade really fortunately doesn't hit anyone, but now he does. And now it's a three and one. He can, he can, wow, he's still alive. How is he still alive? So many players all around him, and Brazil is not really grouping out in him. Law kind of gets sacrificed there for the great to good. That's how it feels like at the very least. And Brazil with the big split still haven't grouped up until phase five are kind of losing control of this round. I really don't like this. I feel like Brazil had everything they needed to win this round, but due to the splits and just overconfidence, they're now throwing it away. One more player is there to secure at least one more knock. He just can't be flashed out and he's holding this run really, really tight and really, really strong. There's three more players just outside of it. What more can Lorien's do? It has to be a vehicle. He takes down one. Maybe he can get a second one if he peeks around the corner. No, he can't. And that's the problem now. Brazil being eliminated. And well, that's not how you play these splits. Unfortunately, Brazil losing what felt like really that round. Crazy stuff that they actually commit to the split for so long and Actually, not even the only compound they have two players in, those two players weren't able to help each other at all, right? We saw how long Law was playing around that building, trying to dodge around the windows, getting nades outside, still completely left to his own devices, no support there from the squad. And it does just come back to bite them in the long run. Dominican Republic, three man up, they take down the one player in the tower, and now they're playing catch up, and now they are in the runnings for it because everybody else completely eliminated circle is not all too bad if they can hold off if they can take out ecuador then suddenly they're looking fantastic for a third place or at least closing the gap to both third and second closing the gap will be amazing i think every team right now is trying to look at the leaderboard situation trying to figure out how many points they would need to close that exact distance it looks Incredibly promising with the way that Argentina has been taken out that early. But it's 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 not yet done. It's not yet done. They still need to secure these rounds, and especially for the Dominican Republic. It's all of the line now. With this round win, with the six frags they've gotten, and potentially with the, with the rest of the frags that they could potentially get, it would get incredibly close on the leaderboard. They could really, really use this round to catch up to Argentina. One more play now being taken out. It is Ecuador losing the first play in the later stages of this one as the Dominican Republic is trying to do a part of this. This could be an amazing nade. I think it's going to hit quite well too, but by the looks of it, no flash yet being secured. Oh, oh. the explosion takes out Darian as well. They're in so much trouble here. They're just so nailed down. They're so pinned down and now the nades are raining on in. They're a little far. The shots come back though. At least Aedes gets one. Should be a res on to Emperor Adora, but will cost them a whole lot of time as well. So Uruguay, Dominican Republic, they're both trying to combine forces here to keep Ecuador from getting into this. And with the zone shifting the way it has, there's almost no space left. There's almost nothing survivable for Ecuador in this zone. You can see it's just pixel angles that they're still surviving in. USA about to be taken down as well. So Uruguay is going to have plenty of space to move in, but they're the only team in the lobby that is free to do so. Yeah. Only real team with an, with an option as well. I'm not sure what else you can play in this one. I think Cardi is trying to rotate just below the Dominican Republic. Yeah. That's a good, good play. Secures him control of the center of the circle. And also, Dominican Republic, because of Ecuador, and also because of their teammates in, the, in his back, can't really peak this. So, the Dominican Republic now with a really tough job at hand. Good thing is it shifted all the way down south. So that means they don't have to move just yet. I think Ecuador's going to have to move before them. And if they do not lose anyone against Ecuador, who are pushing right now, then it becomes very, very possible. A well-cooked nade is going to take Dallas. 
down to very low HP. And they're all in front of him. Election still doesn't want to peek. He really could at this point. If that nade would have been cooked any better, but he's got another one. He could have taken down every single one of Ecuador. Now oh. the nade drains in and hits the tree. How unfortunate is that? But Legend already is cooking the next one. And now he has to hit someone, right? Surely it's going to hit and take down someone. And yes, he does. Darian, one more knock comes through. He needs to get these flushes, though. But he's been taken down to very low HP by the blue zone, too. Hiji barely finds a spot in the Meanwhile, his teammates have all been taken down. He finds one, he finds two, but his team is fallen by the wayside and it's actually Uruguay from the bottom that takes control here, takes everybody out. Two solos on each side, 80s, last one up. He's dancing, he does, he's actually finding one and the second player is so far down, Joaco. Nothing to do about this. He's going to get the nade on out. It looks beautiful. Oh! And it will close the game. <laughs> Uruguay is running away with it at the end. And that was maybe the chance missed for the Dominican Republic. Uruguay, the sun on the flag, will take away a first game on the sunniest map. One of the few players here from Uruguay that is also playing the PMSL and have been just a couple of months ago. The PMSL America Spring, obviously, has played for Entity 7. Good representation here. They needed this win more than anyone. But the Dominican Republic was the one to be favored to take it, and they didn't. Very unfortunate stuff. They couldn't even take second place. That's also a big upset. Yeah. They just couldn't find any of these fragments in Ecuador. And I'm surprised. Once again, I'm surprised because I felt like they would have taken this fight earlier. Um, and they had the option to do so. But Uruguay couldn't really have done anything about it. They had the massive advantage going into that fight too. But, man, Uruguay. Good, good stuff. And that nade to close it off. I um, mean, Joaco. Uh, what a performance. And it starts off with this yeah. one. It starts off with this fight. Who would have thought that was going to be the start of a winning round? Yeah. Uh, it's good, good clean pickup from Uruguay there at the start of the round. I am just can't help but wonder if they had more smokes there, the Dominican Republic, or if they were forced to play this way. Because they were really just, like we said, right? Only one team in the lobby can move. And that was, what, uh, that was Uruguay coming out of uh, Cap Alpha. But you, you would have thought that maybe they could smoke this off a little bit, take control of one threat, and then move on to the other. And yeah. it wasn't meant to be. This was a big moment where Argentina had a chance to do something crazy. Um, if Haiti would have gotten the one before, that would have been absolutely massive for the squad. But again, uh, they, they have had plenty of salvages in the past. And this is the second massive moment that was a big question mark to me, guys. Brazil, yeah. keeping the split all the way to the end with... Yeah, they picked up a few kills along the way. But overall, that was a super winnable game and it felt like they just kind of lobbed that out of their hands yeah they threw it away honestly uh, uh i don't think there's any way about this um they threw it away uh, i was surprised to see them go for these aggressive splits i thought things were going to change and that's a perfect split as well i mean the amount of information you get the amount of you know, angles you have and everyone else rotating in is is amazing but that only works if a four-man team doesn't breach you and it kind of only works and isn't to an advantage if you do it before I want to say phase five, but it's been phase six at that point, and they still yeah. had a two-one-one split. I mean, how weren't they expecting to be preached? They they must have known it. Yeah. Um, they must have known that Ecuador was full four men as well. I mean, that they, uh, it, it, especially with eleven teams, it's not too difficult to read the the kill feed. Obviously, something could have gone wrong there as well, but you would at least expect Ecuador to have some amount of players left standing. Well, yeah, they weren't expecting it. Yeah. Uh, no chance for them to, to react against it. And Ecuador not making any mistake on that cleanup too. Yes, one play has been taken now, but that happens. If the enemy has a DBS in hand, there's just no way around that. Uh, always always a, a risky uh, thing to push. But you had to do it. And Ecuador did the right play. They did do it as well. They were able to clean up all these uh, players. Yes, they lost one, but... Look what, yeah. look, look, what it, look what it gave them, right? It essentially gave them access to two compounds that are really centralized almost up until phase nine. So good stuff from Ecuador as well. Yeah, well punished. Um, well, well appreciated that opportunity and used it to their best ability. 16 points is what they'll take home from it. 20 for Uruguay, 12 for the Dominican Republic. So a lot of the lower half of the scoreboard really coming back in the first Sanok of the day, maybe bunching up that scoreboard quite a bit. Brazil with eight. Chile with one, Argentina with one. Um, that's big news, and that's uh, big news, especially for Argentina now, because they're on the, um, they're the next team to be passed by a team like the Dominican Republic if things go wrong. And uh, yeah. Brazil, yes, they're making a bit of a step away from uh, from Argentina, but they haven't separated themselves from the pack either, which they could have done here if they just consolidated a little bit earlier.
um, tricky, tricky stuff, of course. Um, their, but their split is beautiful until it until it doesn't work anymore. Um, so <laughs> beautiful until it, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's always it's always easy to yeah. say afterwards when the right time to group was, but it feels like you said, right? You talked about it plenty. Massive risk they're taking when all the competitors have been taken out and all they need to do is play solid PUBG here. And solid PUBG is what we saw from Uruguay, holding down the compound they had, keeping it clean, keeping their edges clean, picking up a few kills on the way and then just appreciating it at the end, making the right moves and closing out the game. I want to see if Cardi is playing with... Who else is there? The Latin Kings and Navy Seals. I think that's the team name. There, there, there must be someone yeah. else with that. Yeah, I think it's Achilles. Yeah. Achilles and Malkin and Molina. I think they're all playing together with Cardi on Latin Kings and Navy Seals. So I think Jerry as well from Argentina. They're all on the same team, which is interesting. I think Molina um, is the only one with Navy in his name tag. Um, if I'm if I'm not fully mistaken, there's, there's it was another one. There's it, another was one. it was definitely it was definitely versus it was definitely Navy versus Navy in that fight after the yeah. breaches that we saw. And Colombia and, and Uruguay, I think that was. No, yeah. no, no, no. Uruguay and hey, Colombia. Yeah, Colombia. That's correct. Yes, of course, Colombia. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Colombia in sixth, Uruguay now in fifth after that game. Forty-five points for them. Nine points behind the Dominican Republic, who is eight points behind Argentina, who is six points behind Brazil. And uh, I think basically what we said at the start of the day is, is materializing here a little bit. The battle for second can get extremely interesting. And if Chile would keep faltering like this, um, the battle for first might also be a thing. But for that to happen, um, they would really, really have to um, surprise us today in the worst way possible. Yeah, in the worst way possible. They got to choke. They got to <laughs> choke this game. I'm just going to put it out like that. They I didn't want to <laughs> say it, but you're absolutely I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm just going to say it for you. Um, they got to choke. And Chile has done just that. And Brazil has as well. Which is uh, why we have the lead of what situation that we have right now. I don't know what's up with that pronunciation. I don't know why it's <laughs> choke. <laughs> but it's well, a big I'm choke, you know. I'm, I'm trying, to, trying, to, yeah. uh, trying to empathize it. Uruguay um, did not choke. <laughs> I just tried to empathize it because Brazil had everything they wanted in this round yeah. uh, and more. They had the entire south, they had the entire uh, west, they had the entire center of it. Everything that you kind of wanted in this round up until phase seven is what they had. Um, every single compound. And there's not even a good way to get breached there. Um, if you have these compounds, uh, you know, everything around you is surrounded by open fields. So even just two players in some of these compounds would have potentially been enough to make something yeah. happen. But... Unfortunately, they'll be picked off one by one. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is time, Kovu, isn't it? To take uh, it's a time. quick, <laughs> a very short Ladies break. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. <laughs> I, I keep on thinking about this joke. I still can't believe Brazil has lost this round. Uh, but either way, we're taking a very short break to get into the last five matches of today. And the second one might give us a hint whether or not the Dominican Republic is able to catch up to the front-leading pack around Argentina, around Brazil, and around Chile.